Hey, there's no shame in trying things that people ain't never tried before. I watched Seikano recently. Or Senai Heroin, or... Whatever it's called, boys. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Both seasons. If you've ever made anything, it's about creative people. Quotes. So, there was a lot to like. Up until the very end. And although the end was good, it was a good ending, it really sat poorly with me, or made me feel pretty awful. You see, both seasons were about the creative process for different people, and creators coming together to build a project greater than the sum of its parts. Which they did, with plenty of character growth in the process. But the ending... Boy. Rather than moving on to the next thing, their next conquest, and leaving it there, Instead, his two friends moved on to greener pastures and left him behind because he was holding them back, or at least couldn't give them what they needed to grow. It wasn't spite. They didn't leave in spite. But still, boys, oof, ouchie. Now, the show still ended on a happy note. Everything was working out, kinda. But, man, that feeling they invoked. Obsolescence. God. That's some heavy shit, boys. How do you deal with people you care about? Moving on to better things and leaving you behind. Or not being enough for them. I don't really know, boys. Lizardman, growing up, called us gateway friends. Some unpopular kid would befriend us for a couple months, meet better friends in the process, then abandon us for them. Gateway friends. A Swede said it best. Boys, I have had many best friends, but I have never been a best friend. Swedes, uh, they're normally awful posters, but they come up with good shit on Saturday nights, boys. So... Why do your friends and loved ones all always abandon you? Well, three primary reasons I've found. Better people, better opportunities, or circumstance. In all three cases, for whatever reason, you aren't working, and someone else or something else could, or could work better. For example, Seikano. His friends left him because he couldn't coax their best work from them. They couldn't grow with him. And another director on another project could. Offered them what he couldn't. So they left. Not in spite. It was actually pretty sad, but they left nonetheless. This always feels bad for a couple of reasons. Number one, inadequacy. Especially if you're trying your best. Why wasn't I enough? What else could I have done? And in most situations, there was nothing else you could have done. <laughs> there was nothing else you could do. Shit just didn't work. And then you feel angry. If they left in spite, you're probably angry at them, probably furious with them. If they didn't, God, that's even worse. That might make you even feel angrier. And you feel particularly angry because you know you shouldn't feel angry because they're moving on to better things. You should be happy for them if you really care about them, but God damn, seeing them happy while you fail is miserable, infuriating. Not just at them, but at the entire situation. There is something to be angry at. There is something palpable drawing anger from you, but you can't anger at it. Because if you anger at the people, you're mad at the wrong things, or 
that's not the only thing, or that's not the entire thing, and you can't be mad at the entire thing, and you can't quite place what the entire thing is, so you can't be angry at it other than just being generally angry at the situation. Coupled with inadequacy and the other feelings, it's just not good, boys. Then, these are no particular order, by the way, comes loneliness, aimlessness. If these people moving on, your obsolescence, affects you this way, this heavily, you were probably invested in them. They were probably your world, or at least part of it. And when they move on, or you become obsolete, it's like your world collapses. Everything comes tumbling down. Not only do you have nothing to work for, to invest in anymore, to build, but you also have nobody to turn to because they fucking left. Because you're a useless piece of shit. So... <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, you're in a pickle, aren't you? You're walking in a big field with this big sinking pit in your gut going, Why did this have to happen? What do I do now? Who do I turn to? Where do I go? What is there? And even worse, how do you face these people? Them looking down on you pitifully and trying not to look at them spitefully. Trying to be happy for them while they just throw pity on you. <laughs> how do you face them? Where do you go? What do you do? How do you act? Well, there are a few immediate knee-jerk reactions, which aren't exactly solutions, but they are funny. They're very funny. The first is overtly proving yourself, overcompensating, pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps and uh, getting at it, you know, improving yourself, really improving yourself. Even though you already were improving yourself and being the best you could be, now you're going to be the even better you. <laughs> so you can prove to the people who left you for better things that you're you're also doing better. Or proving to yourself that you're also doing better and your life isn't collapsing <laughs> without them. This reaction was also in Venus and Furs. It's a hilarious book. After getting fucking cucked by a trap, homeboy <laughs> decides he wants to go fight in a war to prove his masculinity or go adventuring and a whole bunch of other stupid shit and he calls it stupid shit until he eventually goes home deciding that proving yourself is stupid and pretty pointless because there's nothing to prove and proving yourself won't fix what you lost won't bring it back won't bring them back second reaction is replacing what you lost or trying to the gateway friend cycle. Boys, befriend some loser, they become popular, so you find another loser, so they can become popular, so you find another loser, so they can become popular. <laughs> or, back to the Seikano example, the story didn't go that far, or in that direction, but you lose your author and illustrator, so you hunt a new author and illustrator to do the exact same things, the exact same ways, to try and make it okay. Compensation by recreation. Boys, moving on is fine. Compensating by recreating is not healthy. <laughs> because just like proving yourself, and maybe that is part of proving yourself, quotes, you can't recreate exactly what you lost. And trying inevitably fails like tears in rain boys it's gone they're gone you aren't bringing it back and if you could it wouldn't be the same would it <laughs> would you want to bring it back if you could knowing you'd be holding them back or it, it just it Forcing it would feel wrong, make things worse, 
than they already are. But those are your two, maybe three, reactions. Proving, recreating, and clinging. None are healthy. So what's the solution? Well, surprise, surprise, boys. We're in the skimmer that doesn't have answers for fucking anything phase. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I have a working solution, but it doesn't always feel quite right. It doesn't completely hold water, and maybe that means that it is the solution. I don't know. But it's what I have. So. You're hurting because you're heavily invested in them. Or rather, still invested. Before, you imagined and actively built your life with them. Now, you're imagining life without them. You are living without them while they do whatever they're doing. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't invest in people. You shouldn't care about people. That's an unhealthy reaction. Rather, I'm suggesting you imagine your life, yourself, as a popsicle stick on a table with countless other popsicle sticks around it. Around you, boys. You lift that popsicle stick up off one pile and set it on another. And that's... your life. What am I talking about? Notice earlier, I said, you imagined and lived life with them, and now you imagine and live life without them. Well, you can still live without them, without living without them. With them and without them are just modifiers. You are living. Living with them, living without them. Trash the modifiers. You can live without them without living without them. Language is really helpful, isn't it? God, I really should just get a degree in this, shouldn't I? <laughs> it comes down to thinking. It's bad if you're living without them and you're thinking about living without them and how awful life is or how great life is with them or without them. You're living without them well or you're moving on well when they're not there and you're not thinking about them. You're not still investing in them. You're not tangled up with them. You're tangled up in whatever or whoever you're with now. Does that make sense? They're gone, but they don't factor in. That's what I mean. That's my working solution. Achieving the working solution, that's where it gets tricky. The goal is to tangle yourself with someone or something else without replacing the people who left you, or aiming to replace them, rather. Now, this in-between period, that aimlessness can really get to you. Especially when you're hunting new purpose. Because you think, God, will anything or anyone fill this hole? Or what am I really doing? I I'm just filling a hole. I'm just filling the hole they left. Is that good enough? And then you think, well, what were they doing originally? just filling a hole. Oh shit! Oh shit! What's the point of anything and anyone then? Oh man, and then you can get stuck there for a little while, but... Don't worry, boys. Don't worry. We're just here to piss around. Life is about getting tangled up in people and things and pissing around and having fun. Or having righteousness, at least. <laughs> Maybe not fun, but having righteousness. And it'll happen. I'm no fan of quotes 
or fables. I've always thought them spiritual injections. But there's one about a king who asked some monk or jeweler or some fucking mook to inscribe a saying on his ring which would keep him humble in good times and strong in hard times. And <laughs> the, the boy wrote, This too shall pass. That aimlessness you're feeling right now will pass. Just watch some anime. Boys, it'll put your mind right on something infinitely better and perhaps even religiously ascended. Or it'll re-inspire feelings of obsolescence you were completely not expecting until the very end of the second season and then you'll feel like shit for a while. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Remember, boys, live without them. Don't live without them. Let life happen. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it. I didn't really know what to say going into this. I still don't really know what to say going into the... Go, le leaving this actually. Making videos has been really, really, really hard lately because I don't know what to say or why I'm saying it or to whom. It's... it feels like a lot of work for no gain and trying to say it or talk about it just makes things more confusing. For instance, this video, Obsolescence, this video is about dealing with obsolescence, people moving on. The video I wanted to make was on obsolescence, the feeling, feeling obsolete. And I don't know how to make a video about that. It's a feeling I swim around in because it's an interesting feeling, but I don't know how to make a video about it. So we made this instead, boys, because videos need points. <laughs> videos need points and nobody fucking comes for rambling. Except, yeah, no, that's right. Like if you enjoyed, because that helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't, because we do this shit sometimes, and comment your thoughts. How do you deal with obsolescence, boys? How do you deal with people moving on? Let me know. I'm curious. But thanks again for watching, everybody, really. We have a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun, in fact. What the hell is in my room that I can talk about filling up with fun? Okay, I have a... Ow, shit. I have a jar right here filled with corks. I think I've already used that as a... You can fill this up with fun, but... I cut a hole in the top because I thought it would be funny to have a tip jar next to my, well it's not my monitor actually, it's my uh, my television set, my 24 frames per second I heardy television set. <laughs> you can fill the tip jar up with fun. That's how much fun we have on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.